You are listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Welcome to Wild About Arizona. I'm John Treeweiler with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Today we're talking about a sport that is in our name here at Arizona Game and Fish, the sport of fishing. With over 100 lakes and five major rivers in the state of Arizona, water is not always recognized as something that we have a lot of here, but we certainly do. And today we're talking about fishing with Andy Clark, our statewide sport fish program manager here at Arizona Game and Fish. Andy, thanks for being with us. Hey. Good morning, John. Thanks for having me. So, as we first of all, let's dive into your role here at Game and Fish. Okay. Uh, kind of what you do and uh, what your role is here. Okay. All right. Yeah, as uh, the sport fish program manager, I work with uh, the six regions around the state and the and the hatchery systems to uh, make sure anglers have the 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 fish that they want to to, to catch and uh, you know kind of oversee the the management strategies and planning and budgets um, that that it takes to you know like say stock fish and and survey. And, uh, and just have an overall uh, goal or, or objectives for sport fish management in Arizona. So that's kind of what I do. And as mentioned, you know, of course, when you think about Arizona, water is not the first thing that always comes to no. mind nope. out here in the desert. <laughs> but uh, there are some really great lakes. There's some just amazing rivers that come through the state and just some really cool fishing opportunities. Talk to us about some of those opportunities because, I mean, it it varies throughout the state, especially in the southern part, the northern part, wherever you may go. That's right. No, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, uh, anybody that spent some time in Arizona will know the diversity of this state is is really unparalleled uh, in in the in the, this country, and so the opportunities for fishing are they they sort of mirror that. So I mean, we've got the high elevation uh, trout waters in the White Mountains and around Flagstaff and and uh, along the Mogollon Rim, and then uh, you know the the, the Colorado River. Um, which we share with with uh, you know three other states. I mean you know Utah, Nevada, and and, uh, and California, big river. There's uh, canyons, the Grand Canyon, um, the Lower Colorado River, and then you know down around the uh, um, Tucson border and in into Mexico. There's just the the Sky Islands down there, uh, grasslands. You know it really the the types of diversity um, is is really like say unparalleled and yeah. Lots of great fishing opportunities for warm water fish, as well as trout, um, you know, in Arizona. So, and even around the Phoenix area, you've mm-hmm. got the Lower Salt River that's not very far. A lot right. of anglers hit that up, and I, I and it's so cool too because, especially on the Colorado River, I mean, though, there's like just the photos that come out of there of yeah. people fishing. It's just not to mention it's just so gorgeous to fish there. I feel you could go there and not catch a fish and not have a bad day just because of the beauty of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. The, you know, some of those places don't have even a tree for miles. You won't see a tree. So if you're from, you know, the Midwest or East or, you know, somewhere where you're used to trees, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy. And I, I spent a good part of my career up in, out of Kingman and, uh, you know, Lake Mead and Lake Mojave. And I thought when I moved up there, I'm not going to like this. I mean, this, (laughs) there's no trees, but you're right. I mean, just the, uh, the unique uh, beauty of the, the the rocks and the the way that that river carved that that whole ecosystem out of out of just the desert there you know out of nothingness it's it really is a stark contrast in the blue water and you know and the sunsets the sunsets over on the Colorado River you know Havasu Lake Mojave just crazy beautiful uh, I mean all you have to do is Google Lee's Ferry and yep, yep. that'll pretty much do it yep, for you yep yep you go up from Lee's Ferry you know towards uh, um, towards Lake Powell, you know, and it's, yeah, that deep canyon, it gets cold down in there, but it's, yeah, the water's cold. It's just, it's really a sort of plays mind, mind tricks on you, right? It's supposed to be super hot, but uh, the water, you put your your hand in the water and it's, you know, 50 degree water. And so it's, it's pretty mind blowing. <laughs> so we kind of touched on it, but depending on the part of state that you're going to fish, you know, your fishing conditions can vary, right. especially in different times of the year. I mean, there is actually, I don't, we don't talk about it a lot, but there is actually ice fishing or the possibility mm-hmm. to ice fish in Arizona. Yeah. And so talk to us about some of the different uh, conditions that folks may encounter in certain mm-hmm. parts of the state and how that maybe uh, relates to certain times of the year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ice fishing, you know, depends on the year, um, you know, that we, we really encourage, you know, safety um, with that. So folks need to really make sure there's, there's several, 
inches, if not a foot, of, of ice. Um, it, Willow Springs Lake is one that's fairly popular for, for ice fishing. Um, certain uh, other lakes across the Mogollon Rim there and into the White Mountains. You, if you can get to that, you know, I mean, like Big Lake, you, you really can't get there. The roads are closed, and it's really not a walkable situation, whereas, you know, places like Woods Canyon and Willow Springs, you can, you know, take that rim road out of, out of Payson towards Sholo, and you can park off of that and walk into those. So that's what kind of provides that opportunity. But, um, yeah, you know, and then, you know, blazing hot. Arizona's known for, for heat, right? <laughs> of I mean, course. We were talking before we, we got on the air here about, you know, the cold in, in North Dakota, you know, Fargo, and yeah. how you don't you never think you're going to get out of the winter. Well, you know, folks that spend a, a couple of summers in Arizona, you know, it's just the opposite here. I mean, boy, it gets into September, and you're like, when is it going to get below 100 degrees? You uh-huh. know? And so, you know, as you get into the summer months, you're starting probably June, July, um, I just go into basically a nocturnal mode, you know, as far as fishing. I mean, a lot of people really like to night fish. Um, when I moved up to Kingman, you know, it was sort of an un, not as popular of a thing to go out and throw crappie lights out at like Lake Mead or Lake Mojave and have the, the thread fin shad come in and then you'd fish under the shad and catch striped bass. Um, so that's, that's one of those conditional, you know, things that, uh, you know, fish all night and the sun comes up about 445, you know, and you haven't that's slept. That's so cool. It's a pretty, pretty cool, unique uh, situations that we, that we have here. Do you have a favorite part of the state, Andy, that you like to uh, like to fish in? I don't know if I could really put my finger on a favorite. Uh, honestly, John, I you know I've lived here all my life and uh, and worked for the department long enough. I've just gotten to see and experience so many cool things. Um, you know, I've, I grew, grew up bass fishing. I grew up here in Glendale, Glen, you know, Phoenix, West Side, Phoenix. So um, we did a lot of fishing at, at Bartlett Lake and, and Lake Pleasant. And, in the salt chain lakes, you know, with Saguaro and, and Apache. So if I had, if you really forced me to, <laughs> I would, I would probably say, you know, some early mornings out on Apache Lake or, or, uh, or Saguaro, you know, those are, those are probably my, some of my favorite fishing times in, for largemouth bass. But man, like I said, sometimes up in, uh, in, at Lake Mead where we've got over 100 fish days, you know, for striped bass, um, and just like you say, the crazy beauty of of that area over there. Um, and then you know, how many times we walked at high alpine, you know, nine ten thousand feet up on Mount Baldy, or you know, Black River, West Fork of Black River, Big Lake. I mean, man, the summertime and the monsoons would come in, and and uh, so just just I don't know if I could pick a favorite again. It's probably reliant on the time of year. You know, this time of year, you know, going down to like Parker Canyon Lake is it, really, really neat. You know, you get, you're right on the Mexican border and you've got all that uh, grassland and, you know, that uh, the Sky Islands, like you say, in there, Fort Huachuca. And, and uh, man, that's just really neat too. So, okay. So, Andy, do you have, because every angler, I feel has a neat fishing story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you, what's your uh, cool fishing story? Do you have one that oh, uh, you can share with us? Boy, let me think about that. I just, uh, there's there's a lot of them. Um, you know, some. <laughs> I think I, the one that kind of comes to mind that was just kind of stupid, crazy uh, was was a an outing uh, uh, up at Lake Mead, and I'm with you know several friends of mine and. We're in one of his, one of my friend's boats, and we we launched out of South Cove, and and went up, um, you know, sort of upstream, uh, up lake, and there was a, a place that uh, we had done some electrofishing, you know, some sampling, you know, that I knew, kind of had some concentrations of striped bass, and, and had been fishing it, and we got in there, and the anybody that's fished uh, for striped bass, you look for boils, you look for the shad boils. Because the the fish are typically you know herding these these uh, this shad into coves or whatever, and then they just rip through them, and 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 it's just this, the shad will just boil to the surface. And sometimes when you're going down the lake, you can see these folks at Lake Pleasant see you know these shad boils. Well, we got into these shad boils with these striped bass, and we were using Zara spooks, uh, um, kind of a topwater uh, lure with two or two or three hooks on them. The ones we were using had had two. And uh, just every cast, it was just got every cast would would yield a striped bass. We were just we were in this little cove, and they were they just kept herding these, you know, 
these shad into then just kept busting through them. And we just literally filled up the bottom of the boat with striped bass. One after another. One huh? after another. And I was, I was joking because I'd go, well, look at this, you know, and cast it you know, blindly over my shoulder over to the back, you know, and this will catch one. Sure enough, you know, <laughs> set the hook on it and <laughs> caught one over my shoulder. So, you know, that, that's kind of a, a crazy fishing that we just looked at each other like, well, we're never going to duplicate this, you know. Yeah, have you ever and, had and that happen again? I've <laughs> never had it happen to that degree. I mean, I've gotten into some other shad boils, and and uh, and it is just you know crazy fun while they're going. But uh, that particular day, we could have fished. I think, you know, there's no limit on on stripers under 20 inches there, and they were all right in that 18 to to 20 inch. So there was sure. no limit. But we literally stopped fishing because we couldn't move around his boat anymore because these fish were just, we had to do something with these fish. So we just pulled off to the side and started filleting striped bass, you know, and (laughs) they were, they were jumping and and boiling all around us, you know, right? We were trying to fillet these fish. And so, you know, we could have continued to, to do that, but you, you know, had to do something. And so we got both had these big ice chests full of fillets and we stopped. Wow. (laughs) So crazy. what what would you say is the most popular type of fishing in Arizona? I know, well, like especially on like the Lower Salt River and stuff. You know, we see a lot of fly fishing for trout and that type of stuff. And right. you know, Lake Pleasant, a lot of people are out in the boats. And right, uh, what's what, what is the most popular type, Andy? Well, the department did a statewide angler survey back in 2013, and we've actually got one uh, starting off um, here shortly. Uh, to get a little bit more, you know, recent data, but uh, this from according to that survey, um, it was 69 percent of the the people that we asked um, fished for trout. So so trout has always been sort of the, you know, the numbers wise the most popular species um, for Arizona anglers to fish for. Um, bass fishing is right on its heels though. Um, it's usually around 40. 40 to 50 percent of folks when you go out and, and creel or survey folks they they want to fish for bass whether it's large mouth or small mouth um, and so catfish is uh, somewhat lower than that but that's a that's usually third and then the the other kind of specialty species we have like black crappie um, walleye northern pike um, some of those those guys are you know somewhat less but People like to fish for those, and it's usually less than ten percent. Um, so, so trout and bass are the perennial favorites. Well, and I know we talked a lot about the Colorado River, mm-hmm. and obviously Lake Pleasant's huge, especially in the Phoenix Metro area. Right. Is that would are those probably the most popular places to fish? Yeah, in the state, according to that particular survey, again, and it's it, it, the trend is it. That survey showed this; it was a continuing trend. But uh, yeah, Lake Pleasant. Well, it was Roosevelt Lake had the most angler use days. So okay. that's that's just when you talk to a person, they say how many how many days you've been fishing. That's the that had the highest uh, angler use. Um, but yeah, Lake Pleasant, Saguaro Lake, and Big Lake up in in the White Mountains, as well as places like Willow Springs and Woods Canyon, has probably over a third of the angler use days happen on those waters. So it's, you know, being close to the valley here, obviously that's going to, you know, taint that or, or, or shift that, that curve a little bit because it's sure. close. But um, certainly in the summertime, folks like to run up to the, to the Mogollon Rim and the White Mountains. So there's lots of use on those, like Big Lake and like say Woods, uh, Woods Canyon, Willow Springs, um, you know, and then wintertime, you know these these salt chain lakes um, and and Bartlett Lake. Bartlett Lake's a, a, a very popular uh, place north of Scottsdale there too. Well, why not get up to the yeah. rim in the summer? It's right. it's much cooler. Exactly. <laughs> we yeah. talked about you talked about trout, and obviously trout is extremely popular. Mm-hmm. And uh, we raise a lot of trout here mm-hmm. in Arizona, and we stock a ton of fish here. Right. Talk to us about. Um, the fish we raise and kind of our stocking and how that works because our hatcheries are just uh, they're, they're they're pretty spectacular. Yeah, we've got uh, six hatcheries, uh, five of which are you know actually produce catchable size. The 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 sixth hatchery is is kind of a, a 
place where we bring in eggs and raise the fry and then and get them up to a you know an inch or so you know, two inches and then they go uh, down to the other hatcheries but so five um, five fish hatcheries and uh, yeah it's all rainbow trout um, I shouldn't say all rainbow trout we've we've recently um, started raising some of the native species Apache trout and and Gila trout for the for the purpose of recreational angling we've we've had a culture program for Apache trout for a very long time to recover because they are a threatened species. Both the Apache trout and, and and Gila trout are on the endangered species list. Even though we can fish for them, they're in the threatened uh, category. We've got special rules that allow us to uh, offer it as a sport fish. So that's one of those things in Arizona that uh, high 90s percent of the species that we fish for are non-native species. And only a handful, the, the, the two trout that I mentioned in the round-tailed chub, are really the only native species that we angle for. Um, so that it sets up this sort of, um, you know, native versus non-native. But So the hatcheries raise primarily rainbow trout. We've got the Gila trout and Apache trout going. As well as, uh, we used to raise brown trout. We don't I- anymore. Okay. We do buy some cutthroat trout. Or get them in from other states, um, so so that that rounds that up. And wasn't it last year there was some albino trout yeah. that you guys and well that and that's extremely rare, right? Well, not as rare okay. as you would think. You know, with uh, with the the way we culture fish in this country, um, you know, kind of like dogs. You know, there's there's in cats. There's just so many varieties of of fish or, you know, fish species and strains of fish. But, you know, it's not as common as some of them, but not terribly uncommon either. And it's one of those things you can breed into a certain lot of fish. And uh, so, yeah, we got some, some uh, you know, small albinos and raised them up just because they're, they're readily recognizable, right? And they got to be 13, 14 inches. And, boy, the... Uh, the, the places we were putting them in, people were loving them because they're they're unique, you know, and they're well, and big. And yeah, it's got to be quite the excitement, or probably more rare for the angler to actually catch an albino trout. Right, right. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, it's uh, what is you know when you get a bite, you know, you get a tug on your line. You don't really ever know what it is. Um, unless it's on the surface, but it's kind of like Christmas. You know, you're reeling in something and you don't know what you're going to get, you know. And so when the folks saw that the, these albinos were, were in the water and, and, uh, and stuff, um, you know, to, to pull up something that's totally unique like that, or what is that, you know? And then, it, you know, like say they're a pretty good size, a pound. Some of them are a little over a pound. And, um, you know, the pink, pink eyes to that, and that's a true albi- albinism is, you know, no... No uh, pigment in the eyes or the gills or whatever, just pink around the the fins and stuff. So they're really cool looking. So a lot of the fish we stock, obviously, they go into you know some of the natural waters, but um, the the community fishing lakes that we have around the state mm-hmm. and specifically in the Phoenix metro area are pretty pretty cool. And really a are. lot of the a lot of the fish stocked are, are obviously brought there as well. Can you kind of touch for us on on the community fishing program and how that works? Because, I mean, it's it, it's 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 such a great place to you can go to a park and just a pond and and it's it's almost kind of like a great spot to even learn how to fish. Right. No. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, the community fishing program started out the urban fishing program in the late '80s, and um, you know we just started with a few lakes around Phoenix and Tucson, and um, yeah, bought our fish from. From, you know, it's it's really a good cooperative with the communities is the the bottom line. So they they contribute a you know relatively small amount of money, and they put into a trust fund. And so the community trust fund, we we purchase fish from outside vendors. Typically, we've had vendors out of Southern Colorado for many years, and uh, yeah, just stock these these lakes with with trout and catfish. Had a great relationship with uh, uh, Mr. Fish, a uh, uh, fish hauler out of uh, Arkansas. Uh, long, long-standing commitment with him, and uh, we bring in catfish and bass and crappie, and and so the whole idea uh, behind the community fishing program was to keep fishing close to home, and we really wanted to try to keep you know if you're anywhere in the valley or in Phoenix or Tucson. And you could have uh, within about five miles of your home is what, is what our goal is, continues to be our goal. 
So we're up to well over 50 uh, lakes around the state. Wow. In, uh, in I can't remember the amount of communities, but it's 15, 18 communities around the state. So, And it's not just the urban areas anymore. I mean, we've got, um, you know, community ponds in uh, St. John's, um, outside of Ash Fork. Um, there's, there's some uh, south of Tucson, several, the Sayurita. Um, so it's really expanded the opportunity to uh, fish close to home and uh, and just keep those lakes fairly well stocked. And so when you you do want to take your kids or you know new to the state, and you want to figure out what you're doing here. The the community fish program waters are uh, a really great place, like you said, to go. Just you know take a take your lunch break and run over to you know a pond and and uh, and you know see what you can catch. Well, and and I know people you can pick up the community fishing guide at a game and fish office, a little booklet that right. will li- list out the various lakes or it's on our website too if you It is fishing. And, and we kind of phased out that booklet, okay. you know, so it is part of the regular fishing regulations, but yeah, the okay. website is always the best place to go get the most information about uh, what the department does, yeah. So if people are new to fishing, Mm -hmm. what kind of programs uh, do we offer to kind of get people interested into into the sport or just get people more to understand it and excited about it? Yeah, Yeah, we, you know, there's, we really try to work with um, angler groups, you know, that, that provide fishing clinics, but the department puts on, you know, dozens of fishing clinics around the state every year. Uh, typically offers loaner uh, fishing poles or at least the equipment and the bait you need to get started. Um, typically in springtime and into the summer is the, the best time to, to find those. We've got a, a calendar now on the, fi- the Game and Fish website that a angler, anybody can go look and see what upcoming events um, the, that, you can, that you can find Uh and it's a really great resource. I can see if I can pull it up here and give you the exact, oh sure, um, the exact link for that. But yeah, it's a, it's that's a relatively new feature that we've got, and, and again, it's in conjunction with the uh, angler groups and and, uh, and and other outlets, so we can kind of ha- keep our our finger on the pulse of um, you know things opportunities that anglers can can have. Um, to go out and, and fish. Well, just about everything is pretty much, I mean, www.azgfd.gov. And then if they click on the, the fishing tab, right, you're going to find just it takes you to the fishing page and you're going to be able to buy your fishing license right there, uh, view uh, the, the the various lakes, just kind of see uh, anything and everything exactly. uh, that you're going to need to do when it comes to fishing in the state. Absolutely, exactly. That will give you a chance to look at what events might be coming up close to you and, and plan your way, you know, especially if you've got kids or, you know, spring break's coming up. Um, yeah, I think my, my daughter's on spring break next week, so that's, you know, great, <laughs> great time to, to get out and do that. Anytime's a good time, yeah, right? Yeah, right. right. Um, okay, I'd like to talk about this because uh, we just had this. You and I just did this actually not long ago. We got to pick a winner mm-hmm. for... Uh, for one of the fishing challenges. We get to pick the grand prize winner right. for one of the fishing challenges here yeah. in Arizona. Talk to us about this because this is, and I, what I like about this is to the, the fishing challenges. And you would think you have to be a super experienced angler to do good at this, but we have had novice anglers also complete these challenges. So right. explain this to us, Andy. Yeah, you know, what I, what I probably glossed over earlier in our conversation was just the uh the amount of the opportunity to catch world-class fish in arizona um and so you know with our state records for largemouth bass being over 16 pounds and uh the world records for flathead catfish and well over 70 pounds 74 75 pounds for flathead catfish six pounds for red ear sunfish arizona provides some great world-class fishing um so with that in mind, the department a few years back created these challenges to sort of promote that world class uh, fishery and so uh, or those opportunities. So we created the the, the AZ Hog Bass Challenge and the Fat Cat Challenge um, to to sort of highlight. Well, we've, you've got a really good chance of catching a largemouth bass over ten pounds in many of our lakes. 
So, uh, but it's important to release those. And catch and release is really the norm these days. I mean, most people will catch and release fish, but you know, when you catch something that's that big, you you might have a tendency to want to keep it and put it on your wall. And so, yeah. some of that stuff, you know, and, and a lot of those are caught deep and um, don't survive. So, you know, we really wanted to promote the catch and release for those those bigger fish and preserve that genetic stock, you know, the, when those bass get up over five, six pounds, we really want that genetic material to stay in the lake. So we created these challenges. Same with the flatheads, you know, once a flathead gets to be 30, 40 pounds, I mean, the thing is 10 years old. So they're really kind of a unique special fish when they get up to those ages. Um, so again, yeah, we created those to just, you know, there's three categories for the AZ hog bass. Um, there's a memory class, a conservation class, and then the, the 10 pound club. Part of the 10 pound club, I wanted to really emphasize that those fish were there. We do a drawing and, uh, we've been really lucky the last three years. We've had our partners with, uh, um, wildlife for tomorrow that support a thousand dollar prize for, for the, you know, at the end of, in February, typically. So, you know, through the calendar year, and then it gives me a month, month and a half to to figure everything out, all the <laughs> logistics, and get with get with you, and you know, and do this drawing. Um, but yeah, so super cool. I mean, we we're, we're able to to you know draw that name. We'll give give that to the winner this year. Uh, well, and the the prize was yeah yeah, yeah a lifetime, lifetime fishing yeah, license. It's been a lifetime that's fishing a license. Deal. So that's you know, uh, and and what this year's mark this year's winner is going to do is donate that back to his son or his uh, one of his children. Oh wow! Um, so he's going to pitch in an extra five hundred dollars. I think is what that is and. This has got to go through some approvals, but I'm we're you know we're going to do this. It's his it's his license, right? He sure. won this prize, so he's he's chosen to uh, um, sort of donate that back. He's a you know somebody that's you know my age or a little older, so you know the lifetime isn't as valuable to him in, in that respect. So um, I thought that was great. You know, he's gonna you can donate that back to uh, you know uh, your your child or somebody of your your choosing, and that way that that child's going to have a. A, a lifetime fishing license. Well, and not to mention, I mean, even if even if you don't get the Graham Prize for these challenges, mm-hmm. and and you can find these on the website that we talked about, but you know, you still get uh, like a kind of a little swag gift gift package. Right. You get a fishing shirt and some other stuff yep. that you know is, and it's a cool fishing shirt too. It's nothing yep. bad. Yeah, no, we we worked pretty hard to to develop a, a pretty cool logo on that, and and uh, uh, got some fishing shirts, some long sleeve fishing shirts, and. Uh, you know, yeah, if you complete those challenges, if you're, you know, catch a five pound uh, bass, you get one all the way up to the 10 pound. Um, I'll send you those. And then the, yeah, like the, the fat cat, the uh, catfish shirts got a real cool catfish logo on it. Um, so yeah, just, it's, you know, got a decal and yeah, you get some other little swaggy gifts that uh, just you can show your friends, hey, I completed this challenge. And, <laughs> you know, they're not super easy. I mean, the, yeah. uh, you know, forty inches or or forty pounds for the catfish is that's pretty significant. You know, well, that's a big fish. And we've had the trout challenge too, right? Where you right. can catch every species of trout in Arizona, and that's how you win that one. Right. The, there's two trout challenges. There's the wild wild one, and then just the general trout challenge. And uh, yeah, the, the great response to to fishing for those, and it gets people to to try to get to all the places where you can catch the the patchies and the gilas and then you know try to figure out where you can get a cutthroat trout and a and a brook trout and a brown trout and so those have been hugely popular well and so okay now you've caught your your fish of a lifetime or you've completed this challenge we're always looking for ways that anglers can stay connected with each other and stay connected with us and one of the one of the things we started just a couple of years ago was our fish az Facebook group. Right. And this has really taken off and it's become a great space for anglers just to connect with other anglers. Right. And even whether it's advice or even just showing off a cool picture mm-hmm. of your catch, uh, we've seen it all. And this has really been a great place for yeah. uh, to promote fishing in Arizona. Yeah, it really has. I mean, it's it's taken off, uh, like you said. I mean, what are we at? 30 something, 30,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, people that are members of the group. So the the hope for that was exactly what you said, that other anglers could share their experiences, what they're using, what they're catching. 
and celebrate with other anglers um, those catches rather than just the department saying, yeah, go here. This is what's been hitting last week. Or, you know, I mean, the fishing report's always a little bit behind just because there's, there's that, lag, that lag time. Sure. So the hope for, for Fish AZ, the, the group site, was to get real, real-time anglers. You know, now with your phone, everybody's got a phone get, taking pictures of, you know, what they're doing. So, you know, what a great uh, venue to show people what you're catching and what you're using. You know, a lot of people are not going to give away their favorite spot, right, or what they're <laughs> using, but some people are. And, you know, if you're new to the state and you want to figure something out, that's a really good place to go. Maybe you just want to wanna that out. share your fishing tale, yeah. your fishing yeah. story with the world. <laughs> See right. if anyone buys it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, wh- what's your advice, Andy, to someone who's maybe out there listening, who's interested in fishing? They don't know anything about it, but they really want to get started. They want to try it. Or right. or maybe someone who's just kind of new to it. They've just bought in their first rod and that type of stuff. What's your advice to some of our newer anglers out there? Yeah, I think I, my advice would be to get on to to Facebook or social media. I mean, right now, you, you just can't hardly beat social media for that type of real time information. And, um, you know, there's other groups other than fish AZ. I'm not going to promote them, but, but they're out there and they're really good, you know, and there's, there's a, a striper fishing group, there's carp fishing folks, there's fly fishing. I mean, really anything that you would, would want to do, of course, the, the bass fishing groups, um, you can you know, request to be a part of that, plus pl- plug into our website and our Fish AZ and use that, that combination of, of sources you know, to, to get you started. And I, I, I know I hear it almost daily from, from folks. It's, it's, Arizona is not an easy place to start fishing. You know, a lot of people move from Minnesota or you know, Michigan or, or someplace where you can, you know, we were talking earlier, you can walk out your front door and, and there's a lake and you know, you, you throw a night crawler in, you catch fish. Well, Arizona's a little more challenging than that. And sometimes it takes quite a bit of effort to figure out patterns. And I and I understand that and I like I say I hear that a lot from folks and I empathize. I really do. Um, don't so get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. You, you know, the best the best way is just to keep trying it and that's why some of these urban lakes and you know, the Lake Pleasant, the Bartlett's, you know, those folks, uh, you know, even if you're around uh, Flagstaff and uh, Francis Short Pond, some of the Williams Lakes, pretty short drive if you're if you're in that area to run over there and um, th- try some mealworms, try your artificial baits. There's, we, we try, like I say, we try to put, you know, a huge amount of catfish and sunfish and things in for you to catch. Um, just keep at it and keep looking at those the, that social media and keep trying. I don't know... Um, that's one thing about the fish AZ. You can see that daily. How I've seen just the last few days where people are like, "Man, I've been here for three years and I've never caught a fish. I got one today, <laughs> and this is what I did." You know, and and so it's it's really kind of cool to, to see that. Hey, it all pays off it in does. the end. Plus, yeah. then you can say, you know, I fish Arizona. It's expert level. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, hey, and of course, if you're out there fishing, you know, you have to do it legally. You need a fishing license in the state of Arizona. Right. Uh, super easy to obtain one, though. It really is. Yeah, it's all online now. You know, we used to sell them at WalMarts and whatnot, which we do, but you still, it, they're, they're going to provide you a, a, a terminal to, to buy your fishing license online now. We've kind of gone that way here recently. And I think it's just a great, easy way. And it's, it's real time. You can make your purchase if you've got internet. You know, it's right there where you, you're sitting in the parking lot and you go, oh, I didn't get a license. Used to be you were kind of done. You'd have to run up to Walmart or whatever. Now you can just get on your phone and, and uh, make the purchase and, uh, and you're good. You know, so, yep, just uh, the, the, the azgfd.gov. Yeah, and license, buy your license. It's right there, really prominent in the front. And, uh, yeah, takes you right through it. Yeah, everything we've talked about today, from buying the license to finding a good fishing uh, fishing spot, www.azgfd.gov forward slash fishing. Takes you right to the fishing page. And, uh, yeah, you can buy your license there. You can uh, view different community lakes. You can read the fishing reports, see what's going around the state. Right. Um, I feel like we could talk a little bit longer about this, oh, but there, all day long, there's a lot John, all day really. long. <laughs> but uh, well, in the meantime, uh, get out and uh, enjoy the lakes and the rivers. Because what is it? What do they always say? Right? Uh, um, it's never a bad day on the 
What, what's the saying? It's uh, well, I don't. Yeah, there's never a bad day on the water, or, or the worst day fishing is better than the. There you go. Uh, the well, best day working. There you, you know? go. Something like that. <laughs> you know what you're going to catch if you're sitting on the on your couch? Nothing. So <laughs> get out and try, and uh, and you might get something. There you go. That's much better. Well, Andy, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thanks for and, having uh, me, John. Uh, happy fishing to everyone out there in Arizona. Yep. Yep. Take care. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov.